So this is the API Playground dashboard. As you can see, a lot of different options and functions and operations, uh, as well as this window in the middle that has lines of code in it. Uh, if you don't know anything about coding, don't worry. There is no coding involved with this. I'll explain what this window does in just a second. But before we do anything else, go to the top left corner here under the setup pipeline and click on the create API key which should open this little window right here. First, what you want to do is you want to choose a name for your API key, which can be literally, well, I'm just going to call mine Earl. And below that, you have two access permissions, uh, storage and image. Storage links your API key to some kind of a cloud storage unit, such as Amazon AWS or Google Cloud. And image allows you to upload uh, images from your uh, device onto this API key. And since that's what we're going to do, I'm going to have that selected. Also, keep in mind, if you have neither of them selected, you will not you will have a, an error message here, you have to select at least one of them, because otherwise, the API key won't have any functions to it. So yes, I have image uh, selected here, I'm going to click generate. And this will generate my unique API key. You're probably seeing a bunch of asterisks here. I just uh, I censored it just in case, and I would recommend that you don't share your API keys with anyone. Uh, this is your unique API key that will give you access to the API playground. What you want to do is you just want to copy it. Keep in mind, this is a temporary API key, and it will disappear after some time. But if you want to use it in the future, what you can do is you can click the download button and save the API key to your device. And then, you know, later on in the future, whenever you want to use it, you can simply copy it into the uh, place that I'm about to show you, which is right here. So this is the API key that I just generated. So now that the key is in place, I can upload the image that I want, which is a basic photo of some sneakers. It's a user generated content standard photo. And if I scroll down to operations here, I have a bunch of different options. There are six operations windows, restorations, resizing, color adjustments, background, padding, and output. Uh, each of these do different things. I won't get into too many details about what they do, but in case you are interested to know what each of these operations accomplish, and maybe I don't cover them in depth enough or I don't cover them at all, what you can do is you can hover over their name, the name of the operation. So for example, resizing, and click on this little question mark that comes up, which will take you to the documentation of the API playground, where everything is explained in depth with, as you can see, examples of what each of the functions do, uh, as the color adjustments, as you can see, again, explains absolutely everything you need to know about each of the functions, which is a very handy tool to have. For this tutorial, we're just going to upscale the photo and we're not going to decompress it. Resizing, yes. Uh, also, the little window in the middle here with the lines of code, uh, it's literally just for you to see what you have selected and what the code is going to be. So for example, I have resizing selected, right? So for example, when I turn it on, as you can see, there it is. And when I adjust the width and height, you will see it change as well. So I want 2000 pixels wide and 2000 pixels high, as you can see they showed up here. What makes this even more useful is that developers can simply copy the code from this middle panel here and just integrate it into their own code without going through any extra steps. Then I'm going to crop to the center again, showed up in the code, I didn't have to write it in. Uh, we're going to ignore color adjustments for now. Background removal, yes, since it is a photo of sneakers and it can be considered a product image. I don't want it to have um, any sort of background, so I will remove the background. And yes, I do want a background color, so um, you can also choose what color you want. Going with something like, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, good. Padding, uh, we're going to add 10% padding, so we're going to lower it from 20. Again, shows up in the code here. I didn't have to put it in. Um, output format is JPEG, and we're going to up the quality to 100%. 
because we don't expect anything less than 100. So now that all of our options are in, all of the operations are filled out, the ones that we need at least, what you want to do is you want to click on send request and your photo should be processed in just a second. So here it is. Uh, this is our image that uh, we process through Clade. Uh, if you want to download it, you can click on this little button, which should open it in a new tab, and then you can just right click and press save image as. So here's a side by side comparison of the original photo and after it was processed through Clade. Obviously, the stri most striking difference is the background. Uh, the original photo has what I presume is a sofa and a shoebox under it, uh, whereas the processed image is complete. There is no background at all, just a uh, gorgeous lavender pinkish hue uh, and uh, the image was obviously upscaled which is not e which is not visible from you know this distance but once you start zooming in you can really tell the difference so for example as you can as you can see it's very pixelated the original photo there's a lot of pixelation whereas the upscaled version barely has any and there's a lot of detail that's visible for example this little string barely visible in the original photo, whereas you can see it in the upscaled version. Also, the Clade AI um, centered the product image, which is very important for a lot of e-commerce marketplaces. And it also adjusted the margins, or sorry, the padding, which is the distance between the image itself and the edge of the canvas. There's still a lot more to cover when it comes to the Clade API Playground, but I believe the best teacher in this case would be to experiment and try it out for yourself. So make sure to visit staging.clade.ai API Playground in order to try it out for yourself and see how you can enhance your own visual content. So that was the Clade API Playground. Try it out for yourself, experiment with your own images, and of course, let us know what you think.